do that as well, or or do you see him primarily as a punt returner? How does he? How will he add to your return game in general? I think I think he has an opportunity. Obviously, I think he can be a punt returner, um, and I think he can also be a, a kickoff returner. You know, there's different types of kickoff returners. You know, the, there's there's double down and kick out power runners, and then you have more of a splatter or a zone type returner where you're more of a of a uh, a speed guy. So there's, you can always fit your return to the, uh, to the player. And I mean, there, there's always an emphasis, uh, any draft class, you know, guys come in, you want to see where they fit, how you can use them on special teams. That's how they're going to make their roster. When you look at this draft class, um, some of the linebackers, I mean, what, what do you like about the potential of some of these guys, even, even a Joe Tryon when he gets out there helping you on special teams? Yeah, I mean, you love everything about Joe. You know, a great athlete, smart, uh, can run, size, physical, you know. Um, I remember years ago in Chicago, I had a guy by the name of Brian Erlocker, and they let me use him for four weeks in training camp in every preseason game. And then mysteriously, right after that fourth preseason game, they were like, hey, he, he's, no, he's no longer covering kicks. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, you love everything about him. Um, you know, he, he's a really sharp kid. So I, I think that, uh, he could fit in punt, punt return, you name it, kickoff coverage, kickoff, t- whatever you need him on field goal block, et cetera. Um, I think obviously you, as, as you look at his tape, uh, at the university of Washington, he, he's, he's played a ton of different roles, uh, on defense out there. So obviously he's a sharp kid and can do it. I think he, I think he'd do a hell of a job out of the, the two young linebackers, both do a nice job. Uh, they have their own particular assets, but one's really, one's really fast and can run and Stewart, you know what I mean? And then the second KJ will, will hit you dead in the mouth. You know what I mean? <laughs> so there's obviously, you know, they yeah. both play with a lot of energy, tough kids. Um, so I like what I see there. I think they, they're doing a really good job. You know, Darden does a hell of a job uh, getting under the football, catching the, uh, catching punts. And, uh, it's only been off a jugs machine right now and they're in shorts. So I don't want to go into it too deep, uh, and send, send anybody to Canton or anything, but he does, he does a really good job of catching the ball. You don't hear it when it's being caught, which is really, you know what I mean? He's got soft hands, um, mm-hmm. does, and he's sudden when he catches the ball. So he's done a nice job. Thanks coach. Next, we'll go to Greg Almond. Hey, Greg. Hey, Keith. Good to see you. Good to see hey, you. obviously, you guys had a very reliable kicking game last year, but I wanted to ask you, on the rest of the, your kicking team, the rest of your special teams units, just where you think you had the most room to improve here in 21? I think, you know, in every phase, I think you're always looking for somewhere that you could probably you can improve. I thought we did a nice job in pump protection. You know, I think we can be better in coverage. You know, I thought we did a really good job in, in pump protection. I, you know, I think we can we can get a whole lot better in in coverage. I thought we I thought we finished the season better on kickoff return. I was with more balls being kicked in play and then getting into the playoffs. You know, we had a nice return at, at Green Bay up there, but I think that and I think we fell into the return that fit Jaden Mickens at the time. Um, so that started to help us towards the end of the season. You'd love to get there uh, earlier in the season on kickoff return and be able to knock the ball out to the 30, 35 yard line, that type of stuff. So um, punt return wise, you know, uh, I think obviously we're always trying to work to get better both inside and outside, whether it's vice on the gunners, uh, holdups and, and downfield technique. I think, I think that will improve this year. Um, I think that, you know, I think that'll take care of itself. Uh, and then you look at the field goal block. I'd love to love to be able to go block two or three kicks, you know, a season, obviously we'd love to get that done. You know, we got to find a way to get that done. And in field goal protection wise, we can improve on that, uh, you know, by not having, you know, out, not in that, a lot of that, you know, it comes from both the kicker and the, and the protection, you know, so, uh, we got to get that cleaned up. Uh, we had a couple mishaps early in the year, and I think we just need to get that stuff cleaned up and then end up finishing the year the way we did. 
Keith, you guys lost so few players from the Super Bowl, but obviously Ryan Smith was one of them. Who I know this is still yet to be determined, but who right. who has impressed you as guys that could step in and really help you as gunners this fall? Well, when you look at the drills that we've had, all right, and you take a look at those guys, the defensive backs, um, several of them that, that have come in. Hamilton, uh, the Hamilton kid's done a nice job for us. Antonio Hamilton, he came in, he's been in. Uh, in the rookie mini camp, he was a tryout guy. Uh, did a nice job for us. I'd like we like him. Uh, D Delaney has been has been a guy that's done it. Uh, obviously, you look at Nate Brooks, a uh, quick kid that's done it. Um, Kinley and Wilcox, obviously, you know the BYU drafty. Mm -hmm. um, so you know you, Wilcox has the length. He's got some long speed. You know, the biggest thing is this, is you've got to get in live action so those three preseason games will be great to find out who those guys are because that's when we'll rotate them. I mean, you know, that's a, it's a special teams nightmare, but you've got to find out in those preseason games who can play. You know, so we've got to get all those guys out there and give them a chance to rotate and find out what's going on with that. Thanks, Keith. Yep. Next, we'll go to John Ludyard. Hey, Keith, I'm curious about Justin Watson. I mean, you guys, uh, Greg mentioned losing Ryan Smith and uh, yep. obviously Andrew Adams, uh, you know, not being back. Yep. You lose some special teams contributors there. You obviously yep. have a super deep wide receiver room, but does that really matter if Justin Watson's one of your best returning special teamers? In terms of does it really matter, what do you mean? If I'm you have to keep you. seven receivers, but Watson's one of them because he's that good of a special team, or does it matter if you've got seven receivers and five corners or, or less than that? Well, the 45, obviously, is, it's going to come down to who you can fit in on the 45. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it will matter. Um, you know, now, does he, get, does he get active? Does he not get active? It depends on who's up, who's down, like, like we did last year at the end of the season. There were games where – Watson was up, and then there were games where he he was down because somebody else was either injured or healthy at another position. So um, it's just a matter of where do you fit your special teams players in on that 45-man roster. You look at the wide receiver room and you see where Tyler Johnson, you know, is going to have to earn some playing time on special teams too. What have yeah. you seen just from his development over the time that you've spent with him coaching him? Well – when you look at him last year, he played some roles uh, on offense more so than special teams. Mm -hmm. um, he was a backup. He was a off returner on the kickoff return. He was a backup uh, really a, a, on most other roles, backup gunner. Um, he was in the box on punt return uh, maybe two games last year. Mm -hmm. uh, but he, his role will definitely have to increase. I mean, obviously that raw receiver room has a lot of competition. For sure. Thanks, Coach. Yep. We have time for a few more. Next, we'll go to Steve Isbitt. Coach, I know you touched on this in a few different ways, but is there really any way to gauge what a rookie punt returner can do until those preseason games? Nope. <laughs> no, because you got to make decisions and you have to manage the game. You know, so and we'll practice that as much as we can. We'll put him in those situations. You know, we'll we'll be in plus 50 punt. You know, he'll have to put his heels on the 10 yard line. That ball's coming down at the eight. Do you step back and field that ball at the fair catch that ball at the eight or do you let it hit the ground and roll in the end zone? You know, those type of decisions have got to be made by him. Sometimes it's good to catch it at the eight. If, they're, if their gunners are down there already and waiting at the goal line, fair catch it at the eight. But just little things like that, we'll, we'll have to create those situations in practice, and, and we will, and we'll put him in those situations. He'll be prepared for them. It's a matter of how he'll, he reacts to them in the game. Um, just as simple as a, a, a bad punt. You know, that does, that hits the ground. What do you do? Do you play it off of the first bounce or do you play it off the second? You don't really want to play it off the second bounce because if the, by the time that ball's bounced a second time, that gunner is right next to you and he's probably going to knock the shit out of you. And you know, obviously there's going to be a ball on the ground. So just situations like that, that we've got to, we're, we're going to talk about with him and put him in those situations in practice. Um, 
but he's going to have to be able to make those decisions uh, in, in a game. So, it, it, you know, it, it'll take some time to develop him, but that's everybody. Um, but uh, he'll, we'll hit enough situations that he should be prepared. And uh, the kicker you have in camp, uh, Jose Bargales, can you give some insight into why you think he chose the box when you have such an established kicker with in Ryan Sucker? Uh, I think that that's probably why he came, you know, so what better way to learn than to come, you know, go, come in and, and kick behind a guy that, that uh, that's done, done well for years. And then you, you have Chris Bonio here who kicked in the league uh, and was a, was an established kicker for years. So uh, he's got two guys there that he can learn from. Uh, so if you're going to go to camp, uh, well, you might as well go to camp somewhere where you can learn. Thanks. Yep. And last question will come from Leo Haggerty. Coach, hey, for the first in a long time, you didn't have a question mark next to the kicker with Ryan Suckup. You had a holder from Clemson and a kicker from South Carolina, and the Tigers and Gamecocks don't usually get along. Was there some interesting conversation in that room between those two guys? Yeah, there, you know, I, you know, now both of them are, are both uh, men of God, so they, they they keep it to a to a minimum. But there, there's some trash talking going on at times. Yes. All right. I won't elaborate on it, but yes. <laughs> all right, that's all we have time for. Appreciate you taking the time, Coach. All right, guys. Thanks.